What happened? Actually, I was coming, you know, and was stuck in the door and I hit with the table, you know, the table in the restaurant. Uh, yeah, and two, three people just fallen on me. Yeah, so. Three News camera got a glimpse inside the cathedral. It was able to confirm the terrible damage. The tower, which people were thought to be inside when the earthquake struck, was now in ruins on the floor. Jane Luscombe, Three News. There's four floors of staff. Four floors of staff. Four floors of staff, so there could be anywhere about 200 people in the, possibly in the building. Okay, and that's your friend on the roof, which is a she colleague. She is, she's a colleague, that's Christy. Yep. What's her last name? Clements. Christy Clements, she's yep. waiting for uh, She's waiting for the fire assistance. Yeah. Were you on your lunch break? Yeah, or? thank goodness, but yeah, we're just worrying about other colleagues in there and making, hoping that they're okay. How many of you are out, do you know? Can you see other colleagues around? Uh, our colleagues are just in the little circle on the grass there. So there's only, um, there's only about 10, 15 people there? Yeah, no, we've um, heard there's four trapped under concrete on the fourth floor. Um, they're coming in from the back, they'll be coming soon. Just keep away from the edge. Sarah! Oh, poor girl. The poor girl. Christy. Christy, there's another shop. Move back. They're coming, they're coming. And do you just stop stuff? Uh, yep, there's um, perpetual trust is there. So, mm -hmm. um, we're Marsh Insurance Brokers. They're coming. So these pictures are coming in from Christchurch. They were shot just a few moments ago. And we can make out from the signage on the building that this is the Copthorne Hotel. One of the witnesses mentioned Marsh Insurance Brokers and also Perpetual Trust. There is a woman trapped on the roof. Just dreadful, dreadful scenes coming in now. These pictures are coming to you, unedited. They have been shot from close to the TV3 building, which is also in the CBD. And they're being fed live from our Christchurch newsroom. We're seeing shots now of Christy Clements being rescued from the top of a building which we believe is the Copthorne Hotel. The building has collapsed and she was a survivor on the top. These pictures were shot just a few moments ago and as you can see she's just being rescued by the fire service there from what remains of the building. What a terrifying experience. Now, as I say, we, we believe this is the Copthorne Hotel because of the signage outside the building. But an eyewitness from just outside the building has also mentioned Marsh Insurance Brokers and Perpetual Trust.
press and CTV. Both those buildings have been severely damaged. There's a building about 150 metres from where I stand where there's quite a large number of people trapped in this building. That's the Pine Gall Guinness building and it's uh, pretty well collapsed and it's going to be a hard job rescuing people from there. The pictures we're seeing, we're still on the Christchurch Cathedral, but just across that for um, members of the public is the press building that Jeff was talking about. Now we're seeing pictures of the Forsyth Bar building and there are people waiting to be rescued on the roof. Um, now we understand the group of people have been rescued because the staircase collapsed and they had no way of getting down. So is it your understanding they've all been rescued from there now? We certainly saw the pictures a bit earlier on of a big crane rescuing them. Uh, Hilary, I think most of them are out. I couldn't confirm every last one was out, but basically a large crane arrived and uh, picked up the people from a balcony high up the building because obviously they were trapped up there. They couldn't get down by lift, of course, and the stairway had collapsed on them. I'll just and interrupt you, Jeff. The pictures we have are coming in now, I believe, are of the press building. Now, this is my own speculation. I'm trying to work out... We've just seen the cathedral, and the press building is directly opposite the cathedral. We know That's there are right, people Hillary. trapped in yes. there. We know there are people yes. trapped in there. In fact, we had correspondence from a woman whose sister and colleagues were trapped under their desks. There were yes, injured right. people as well. There are still yes. people trapped in that building. We've just had that confirmed. Still trapped in that building. Now we're seeing shots of the CTV building and a plume of smoke that is coming from that. And this is the terrifying thing, because if there is now fire in that rubble, it makes a chance of any rescue of someone who is still alive just so remote. Yes, I was talking to a press photographer who was out doing his job around the city, and he said to me that he was on one of the top floors when the quake struck, and he understood that there were seven people trapped up there. This was a good hour or so ago, so I'm not quite sure whether they've been able to get any people out. But for people outside of Christchurch who don't know the Priest Building, it's an iconic old building in Cathedral Square, and it's, um, it's a very nice old design, and it's part of the character of the square, but uh, obviously the, the cathedral's uh, gone as well by yes. the sound of well, it. Well, I have the, to say the from these pictures that are coming in, Jeff, the CTV building appears to be absolutely devastated. It has been completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. It's heartbreaking. The, the cranes are already working to clear rubble and it's on fire yes. as well. It is just heartbreaking. Yes, they've set up an emergency medical triage centre in Latimer Square which is very close to the CTV building but I haven't heard uh, whether they've treated anybody from that building. I haven't been across there. It's quite difficult to move around the city because of the liquefaction issues and uh, there's a lot of cordons and it's difficult to pass through them. The authorities aren't letting many people move around. We have had confirmed that there has been at least one fatality from the CTV building. Just seeing shots now of ambulance workers and makeshift emergency centre set up near the CTV building. There are a number of ambulances there. That yes, is very um, poignant, actually, seeing mm. those ambulances there. They are prepared right. to it, treat the injured. An interesting little uh, sideline is that there's actually a conference of urologists being held in Christchurch at the moment. And they were at the convention centre, which is in the central city. So there's a large number of out-of-town doctors, and they've actually volunteered to go and help at these various triage dressing stations. And I spoke to a group of them who'd been to Latimer Square and had been helping up there. Yes, these pictures we have coming in, we're flying over a different part of the CBD. I'm trying to work out what direction we're going in. Oh, here we are. This is the Pine Gould building. Now we've had quite a bit of footage from the Pine Gould building of people being rescued. An amazing rescue of a woman from on top. But there is at least one confirmed fatality from the Pine Gould building and we know there are people still trapped there. Yes, it's, um, it's quite a scene around there. There's a lot of rescue workers. Sniffer dogs have arrived and the workers are actually working on 
probably the second or the third story where the building seems to have sort of pancaked and you know it's surprising that people survived that when you see the pictures uh, you know they were probably quite lucky uh, if they went under their desks or or the way they fell but um, it's a scene of devastation there. It There's a large number of just extraordinary. emergency workers there. There, there yeah. certainly are, and we've just had confirmed that there are more than 30 trapped. This building, words can't describe it. It has simply tipped over, one floor pancaked onto the next. It is four storeys high. We had pictures earlier in the afternoon of a woman clinging for her life from the top storey of that building. And now that we're seeing this aerial view of that building, you realise the utter terror she must have been suffering. It's, it's just it's extraordinary. A, it's a relatively modern building too, Hilary. This is the interesting thing. I mean, a lot of the buildings that have collapsed around Christchurch have been older brick buildings. But this is a relatively modern looking building. I couldn't exactly tell you how old it is. Maybe it's 10 or 15 years old. And there's another building, similar design, right beside it, that's still intact. Um, so uh, you'd have to wonder why this particular one collapsed. And it's, as you say, it's hard to describe. It's like it's been bombed. Yes, you're right, Jeff. That it, it, it's certainly not one of those brick buildings that seemed in the first earthquake to have been one you might have expected to have trouble. Even, you know old style churches um, you know it's not not entirely surprising that in an earthquake some of those brick frontages come those facades come down and yet that pine gold building looks relatively modern surely right. earthquake proof mm, well these more modern ones are supposed to go with the flow when there's a shake whereas the older brick ones uh, just put up a, a wall of resistance and uh, basically they get broken uh, whereas the modern ones are supposed to sort of flow a bit like a willow tree, I suppose, in the wind. Uh, but this one has collapsed and um, there's, there's major devastation there. I spoke to a gentleman who was trapped there for almost two hours, um, a Mr Jeff McClay. Oh yes, was, we saw him. We, we saw him earlier on. He was remarkable. Yes. He'd been in there for an hour and a half. Yes, yes. And he said he couldn't stand up when the quake struck. He just sort of fell over and luckily I think a column sort of sheltered him from the other floors that would have pancaked down on top of his one. Now but Pine he... Gould, Jeff, I've just got to hand, the Pine Gould building was built in the 1960s. Right. So a little older than it looks actually. Now I also need to add that the CTV building, there is now no suggestion that anyone has perished in that building. We ha had a report that there may have been one fatality, but they ma that may not be the case. It certainly is a scene of utter devastation. It has been completely destroyed. Now we're just flying over the outskirts of the CBD and seeing large, vast areas of liquefaction. Entire streets almost that have been taken over by water, burst water mains in there as well, and liquefaction and traffic as, as you'd expect at a standstill. I'm sure there are a number of people who took to their cars to try and go to the buildings that they knew their husbands, wives, family members were at, parents who were desperate to check that their children were okay, jumped in the car and tried to make their way across the city, but it's just utter gridlock right across Christchurch. That plume of smoke that you can see in the back of shot is from the CTV building, which is entirely collapsed. Sorry, Jeff, what were you going to say? I was just going to say that around the central city there are abandoned cars everywhere, some of them extremely badly damaged by rubble that's fallen onto them. Others appear to be trapped in the liquefaction. And it's actually quite difficult to drive around the central city because some of the roads have broken up so badly that you almost belly your car as you go over some of the humps. We're just seeing a picture of a car doing just that, Jeff, uh, and that was beside the Avon River where these helicopters with monsoon buckets are picking up the water to try and douse the flames on the CTV building. Yes, it, speaking of the war zone analogy, it's 
sounding like a war zone too. You can hear helicopters everywhere, you can see helicopters, there are people in uniform, there's smoke, there's fires. Earlier this afternoon there were alarms and sirens sounding. It's very much like being in a war zone. Yes, we're still getting aerial pictures that we're broadcasting unedited. So we do apologise. From their buildings, their office buildings, to open spaces, and people were just gathering in circles, talking, and there were continual aftershocks. The ground was just shaking, shaking with all this noise. And, you know, people were screaming. There were tourists looking bewildered. Then I got into the square, the heart of Christchurch. The cathedral spire had collapsed. And that's the heart of the city. That's the, the central part of Christchurch. The heart was ripped out of it. And my heart sank because I thought, oh, no, this is such a shame. The city's been trying hard to get back up. And here's the and heart of this. it just collapsed. And, Jeff, and then, I guess the immediate concern, too, is for one's family. Your family, are they OK? Were you able to make contact with them? I had a bit of trouble, Hillary, because the cell phone network went down. But I got a second-hand message from my wife um, that came via my son to say that she was OK, so I was, I was really happy about that. Then another one of my sons turned up to work and he was good, and my third son was staying with friends. So my family's all good, and um, you know I'm sure there are people in, in a terrible situation tonight, and my heart goes out to them. Mm. I, I really feel... We have heard from a man whose son in Christchurch has texted to say he and 23 others are trapped in the 17th storey of the Forsyth Bar building. Now, this is this building here. They're OK. Uh, the stairwell has collapsed. Now, this is breaking news. It's happening right now. They are being evacuated, rescued as we speak. So, Trevor, uh, you let us know that he was, he was there. And this is, you know, a ray of hope inside what has been an utterly devastating afternoon for Christchurch uh, but it appears everybody is okay on the 17th floor there they're trapped but they are going to be rescued emergency services are there and will be rescuing them now some other news just to hand we're getting anecdotal reports now that the suburbs of Brighton and Littleton are unlivable of course, Littleton is the area where the epicentre of the earthquake was. It was 10 kilometres south of Christchurch, 5 kilometres deep and at a magnitude of 6.3. Another severe aftershock has just been felt. And of course, this is the fear now. As rescuers go into these collapsed buildings, a number of collapsed buildings around Christchurch, and try and rescue people, that they themselves may be in danger from a building that will collapse even further. So they have to be very careful. You heard the Deputy Prime Minister Bill English confirm there that they have accepted, the New Zealand government has accepted international help for expertise in search and rescue operations. That help was offered immediately after the extent of the earthquake was revealed a number of hours ago. So that has been actioned. A number of international crews will be coming in to help in the search and rescue operation. And we can only hope that that will be a search and rescue operation and not a search and recovery operation, even though officials have confirmed that there are multiple fatalities. So these pictures are of the Forsyth Bar building in Christchurch. These shots are being shot from the TV3 building. We can see right across there. And the TV3 building is in Kilmore Street if you know Christchurch at all. So that is the view from Kilmore Street across to Forsyth Bar Building. And this is the rescue that is currently underway for 24 people who are trapped on the 17th storey of the Forsyth Bar Building. Now, it's not so much that the building has collapsed, because you can see that it hasn't, but the stairwell has. So. They have no other means of escaping the building because the stairwell has collapsed. Just while we're watching these pictures, I'm going to repeat that the 111 system in Southland is not working at the moment because of the infrastructure damage in Christchurch. 
If you are in need of emergency help in Southland, you need to be calling your local police station or your local fire station. Those numbers are coming up on screen now. For the Southland Ambulance, call 03 211 3044. The fire services number, there it is, 03 214 3779. Just repeating, if you are have in need of emergency services in Southland, 111 is not working. So here we are now, watching live pictures of a rescue unfolding on the 17th floor of the Forsyth Bar building. Trevor will be watching his son and 23 others being rescued from this building. The stairwell has collapsed. They cannot get out. Amazing, isn't it, to think that the earthquake struck such a short time ago at nine minutes to one and emergency services are already there with a crane rescuing these people. What a terrifying, terrifying ordeal. And the police are warning people too not to jump in and try and help with the rescue if they or, the, or other people may be in danger. It may be that you can help, but follow the instructions of the emergency services. Just repeating, this is the Forsyth Bar building, the 17th story, and 24 people are now being rescued. Yeah. 